Hey guys, welcome back. This is a rather unique little piece of equipment we got here. What we're looking at, or what you are looking at, is an HP 2140 netbook. This is what I always wished netbooks would have been like. It's basically a small version of a normal laptop, not cheaped out at all. It's uh, fully featured out with a full set of ports. We've got SD card reader, um, express card expansion slots. This has everything on it. It's got an aluminum case, which feels fantastic. A really quite decent keyboard uh, for the size of the machine. This is, they claim it's like a 90 some percent uh, full sized keyboard which I'm um, pretty much inclined to agree. Uh, it feels remarkably decent. Um, the trackpad is a tiny little thing that's squished in at the bottom, almost an afterthought. Um, but to keep the form factor they were going for, I guess they kind of had to shrink that down a bit. Um, trackpad, although it's tiny, is fairly responsive. But yeah, the uh, Mini 2140 is a pretty unique little uh, machine. This was designed for educational use, so these were mainly used in schools. But as you'll tell, this one here in particular is in absolutely gorgeous condition. Um, there's almost not a scratch on the thing. It basically looks like it's new. Um, the battery holds a charge for oh, probably five to six hours. It's pretty much new as well as far as I can tell. Um, has a nice little indicator down here that shows you the uh, charge status of the battery which is very nice to see. Um, I've actually yet to take this machine apart so I'm not sure how you get into it to service it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how you open that thing up. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look around the laptop here real quick at some of the ports. We've got a full-sized VGA port, we have a cooling vent, which is absolutely tiny, you can see that next to my thumb there, it's a tiny, tiny little port. We've got a USB port with uh, something next to it, I don't know what that's for, maybe possibly for some sort of uh, additional power or something, maybe for one of the HP, one of those HP hard drives, I'm not sure on that. Um, if you do know what that is, please uh, let me know in the comments, I would very much like to know. We've got our audio ports, microphone, headphone port. Um, on the front, we've got our little power slider, a hard drive activity indicator, a Wi-Fi slider. And these little uh, little sliders light up blue when they're on. Um, Wi-Fi lights up blue when it's active and orange when it's not active. Um, we have, as I said before, express is this express card. What is that? Um, I think it's Express Card, um, but yeah, got one of them. <laughs> one of those slots, whatever that is called, I don't recall. Uh, we've got an SD card reader. Not sure if that'll read larger cards above 32 gigs. I doubt it, but it might. Uh, we've got a just standard USB 2 port. Ethernet port, which may or may not be gigabit, I imagine for this time period, like 2009 era that this thing's from, that would probably be gigabit. We have a power uh, power jack, and what looks like a USB-C connector, but is actually a Kensington port. This design language of the uh, of the 2140 here reminds me of the older um, MacBook Pros that were pre-aluminum unibody, but still aluminum, if you know which ones I'm talking about. Um, they had kind of the aluminum around a plastic insert on the entire frame, and that's really what this reminds me of. Um, yeah, it's kind of a neat uh, neat design. It's definitely, the aluminum definitely doesn't really add much structural support to the machine, I don't believe. It's more just aluminum over a plastic inner body. It's more decorative than anything, which is really quite surprising for a business-oriented laptop. This doesn't look business at all. It looks very much like an entertainment-oriented machine. 
which is you know, fully carried over by the lovely 10.1 inch actually 1366 by 768 display which is um, fairly high resolution for a netbook most of them were running a very very strange uh, resolution display much smaller um, so yeah this one's actually a pretty good um, resolution for a netbook as a very large keyboard as I mentioned before you notice that um, the keyboard goes all the way to the edge there's basically no bezel on the edges of this which is great because they're getting the most out of the keyboard as possible keys are pretty darn close together so it makes it a little bit awkward to type on but no more so than most laptops honestly and the keys are fairly large it is a little bit easy to hit two at the same time if you've got bigger hands but for me it's perfectly fine we have arrow keys which are fairly sensibly laid out as in comparison to a lot of other compact laptops not compact compact um, yeah they are usable you know if you're just scrolling through stuff on a web page using the up and down keys that works just fine um, we do have a nice little button for enabling and disabling the trackpad so you can turn it off when you're typing that's quite a nice little feature there to have um, yeah overall screen looks really really nice and it's in extremely good condition on this machine, along with everything else, basically. I will mention that the palm rest is plastic. Um, and I believe the cover over the LCD is also plastic. I don't really want to mess with it too much because I don't want to scratch it. Because it's a large piece of glossy plastic, and you know what happens with glossy plastic. Well, apparently, going to turn this thing on was the cue for my camera to, well run out of battery in a dramatic fashion. So we have fresh new batteries in the camera and let's go ahead and power on the little HP Mini and see what happens. Now installed on here is a copy of Kali Linux which is pretty much the only Linux distribution that I've been able to get that uh, recognizes the Wi-Fi adapter in this thing correctly and functions. Um, it's got a Broadcom Wi-Fi adapter that is apparently not the most compatible thing with Linux. And I am by no means a Linux expert, so getting drivers to work for it is not really going to happen in my realm of knowledge. And honestly, I don't really want Kali Linux on here mainly because this is a really old version of it and the new version doesn't work either. So I'm probably going to end up putting Windows 7 back on it, which um, was actually what it came with when I got it, but the install was kind of screwed up. So I decided, eh, I'll just put Linux on it. It'll probably run better. Um, but let's go ahead and log in here. Ah, uh, boy, what was, the, what was the user on here even called? Was it admin? I think it was just called user. Apparently not. Let's try root. There we go. Must be um, root. Must be the only uh, user active on here, <clears throat> which is not good for safety. So it means everything is going to be running in um, basically administrator level access. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it is running quite uh, quite well for how old this machine is. I mean, it's, uh, it runs Linux, uh, Kali Linux, pretty well. Um, now this OS is designed for, like, network penetration and testing and stuff like that, so it's not really the ideal desktop OS, and this actual install is very old, and for some reason, I can't get, um, I can't update any of the packages on here. For some reason, it doesn't, uh, I guess it doesn't see the repositories or something where the packages are located at. It's not able to access them, even though it is connected to the internet. Um, 
let's go out and browse out to youtube.com. You see, it's uh, not the fastest machine in the world. Doesn't help that my Wi Fi is garbage. But, and you'll see here, oops, your web browser is no longer supported. Um, but it will still continue to work. Yeah, this particular web browser is Ice Weasel, which is based on a very old version of Firefox, at least this particular version of Ice Weasel. And since the package manager and all that stuff doesn't seem to really be working with this install of Kali, I can't really update it to a newer version unless I go with something like Google Chrome, which I can install from a... Um, uh, not a tar, but what's the other one? The stuff for Debian dot deb file, deb. So yeah, let's go ahead and play a video. Uh, what should I play? There's a good video that I use for testing stuff. Just a uh, kind of nature scenery thing give you a little idea of its video playback capabilities yeah not not the greatest but once it gets going it plays all right i wouldn't really be watching large amounts of video on here i don't know what this, this is not even in hd and it's struggling with this let's try full screen again and see what it does actually seems a bit more stable in full screen, which is surprising. You know, that's actually playing all right. As long as you don't mess with it while it's going, it seems to be okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a problem with that. For, uh, for non-HD video, this works okay. Um, considering the specs, it's running... I'm not sure if this is a single or a dual-core Atom. Uh, it's one of the Z series Atom processors, so it's pretty darn old. Um, I do not remember the exact model, but it does have 2 gigs of DDR2 RAM installed, so it's been upgraded. It has a 320 gig conventional spinning hard drive, which may or may not be dying. I haven't quite figured that out yet, because I've had some issues with, well, the first install of Windows 7. It worked fine for, like, two or three boots, and then it seemed to lose its video driver, and everything just went to hell really, really fast and then eventually it wouldn't boot at all anymore, so... And this this is like in a course of half an hour, just booting it up and shutting it down a couple times. I hadn't even connected it to the internet yet, so... It had some issues with that install. Um, everything else has been working on it, but as I said, it's been a, just a nightmare trying to find an operating system that will recognize its uh, wireless chipset. Um, I could probably actually open this up and swap out the Wi-Fi card to a more standard Intel one, and we'd probably be just fine. But, I don't know, some HPs are picky about what you install for Wi-Fi cards. But yeah, there's really not that much to talk about with this little machine, so I think I'm going to just leave it there. If you guys have any questions about it, please do leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video.